Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is Satisfaction Saturday. We're so satisfied in knowing that we are now at the last day of this work week. God has been good to us. You know, the seventh day is a day of rest. I hope you'll get some rest. Some of you have already gone out to the state fair and you stayed up later and you ate things you may should not have eaten. You know, you can always get in trouble eating that cotton candy and eating those funnel cakes. It will tell on you if not today, but it will on tomorrow. Today, I invite you to look with me at a very powerful passage out of Mark's gospel, the second chapter, verses 18 through 22. It's a very powerful passage that talks to us about fasting. You know, they began to ask Jesus a question. They said once when John's disciples and the Pharisees were all together, they began to talk and they began to say, why is it that Jesus disciples don't fast, but John's disciples did? And all of us as Pharisees and scribes, we fast. Jesus replied, do wedding guests fast when they're celebrating the groom? Of course not, because the groom is there. It's nothing but a banquet. Jesus is reminding them that he is the one that they are fasting for. They were fasting that they may be closer to God and be in the presence of God. Jesus lets them know that he is God with them, Emmanuel. And there's no need to fast because you're now in the presence of the bridegroom. You're in the presence of Jesus Christ, the son of God. You know, many of them were asking this question because they wanted to know why Jesus disciples were so different. Well, they were different because they had a walk with the master. I think that is true with all of us. When we have a walk with the master, we're a little bit different. And Jesus begins to tell them how you cannot put the old with the new and the new with the old because they just don't work well together. He tells them, any of you who has a new garment and it finds itself shrinking. And do you find yourself replacing the place where a, a shrink or where a tear is with old cloth? No, they won't blend together. It's because something is about the old and something different is about the new. We must remind ourselves that Jesus came to bring about a new age. He came to bring about a new revolution. He came to bring about a new way that you and I understood that God wants to put something new in his people. God wants to give them just what they needed. Jesus tells them in the same way, who puts new wine in old wineskins? If you do that, the wine will burst the wineskins. You put old wine in old wine skins because it belongs to being a part of the skin. But if you have new wine, you have to put it in a new container. Jesus is saying that I'm putting something new in these disciples. I'm putting something in them that you've never seen. The reason you don't understand it is because you're caught up in the traditions of men. You're caught up in the old age. But God is trying to do something new. You know, the same could be true with many of us. Many of us, we are so married, so wedded. We find ourselves so connected to the old and we cannot have any room for something new. God tells us every day he wants to do a new thing in us. He wants to make our relationship with him fresh every day. It wants to be better than it was the day before. When you and I will allow our new relationship in Christ to grow, we'll find out that we have to have a new way. We have to have a new attitude. We can't do the old things we used to do because we're new creatures in Christ. The Bible reminds us if anyone is in Christ, they're a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. So Jesus tells them, my disciples don't have to fast because I'm already with them. You and I need to know the purpose for fasting was to draw closer to God. So today, let's draw closer to God by getting to know Jesus in a most intimate way. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Always know that you're exceedingly and abundantly blessed. And God has a great blessing in store for you in this year of 20 and 23. May it be bigger and better than you ever thought it would be. Take the Lord with you everywhere you go and bring him with you tomorrow as we celebrate nine o'clock in-person worship service at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where God's blessings never stop flowing. And we'll see you then. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. 
Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Yeah.